Hi guys, this is Jay Gosuiko for EMT Paramedic on Facebook and for a couple of doctors and nurses friends of mine. All right, so let's just jump in. This is your aortic dissection versus abdominal aortic aneurysm, your AAA versus your aortic dissection. So void of severe trauma because severe trauma, especially torsional chest trauma, uh, for instance, a high-speed motorcycle accident, or if you get a, a head-on, high-speed head-on collision, you might get the aortic dissection down here and your, your aneurysm up here, your aortic aneurysm up here. But void of congenital defects or severe trauma, you'll always have your aortic dissection up here and your abdominal aortic aneurysm down here. All right, so... Um, the, the reason for that is because up here you have clavicles, rib cage, sternum. You have all these organs that are pressing on the outside of the ascending aorta. And actually, so a little bit of anatomy and physiology, ascending aortic arch, the thoracic aorta, and then the descending aorta in your abdomen. All right, so your descending aorta, you don't have anything. It's very soft and supple in your abdomen here. There's no hard uh, organs pressing or hard bones pressing. And so the weakness in that lining happens on the inside, but where it shows is gonna be on the outside. So you'll get your aneurysm forming on the outside. So this aneurysm could be circumferential could be all the way around the aortic ab abdomen, the, the aorta, abdominal aorta, sorry. And because of that, you can feel a pulsatile mass. So that's significant for a pulsatile mass. Up here, you will have a difference between right and left blood pressure. So if you have time and you have a hypertensive patient, you need hypertension. As I explained in my last episode, if you have hypertension, that's your pressure washer, remember? That's your pressure washer that forces blood at high blood pressure up into your aorta. But your aortic arch, which is going from your right side to your left side, the, the way it arch goes, the blood flow goes, is it, uh, your heart pumps in this direction, causing a little erosion right there. That erosion gets bigger over time. And so the reason why you need to keep check on that hypertension as soon as possible and not wait until you've had years or decades of hypertension because this could slowly be happening, either a weakness on the inside of your, abdo or your abdominal aorta or a weakness on the inside lining of your aortic dissection. So there's that erosion, turns into a little hangnail, right? That hangnail gets bigger, turns into a windsock, right? And then that uh, windsock may even get so big that it crosses over your right brachial artery, the outflow of your right brachial artery from your heart. And so this is a divider. And not coincidentally, divider in Latin is a dissection, right? And some people have dissections that go all the way around to the arch and start affecting your, um, your, carotid, um, your carotid flow to your brain. So again, you wanna um, take, keep an eye on the right and left blood pressures if you're pre-hospital. You can help rule out or rule in. You can even do this in hospital. And a lot of times a physician will ask you to take blood pressures right and left. This is the reason they've got hypertension and they're ruling out or ruling in an aortic dissection. Down here, it's a pulsatile mass. So on the way in, you can report off to the, uh, to, when you're handing off, you can tell the person that you're handing off care to in your, um, in your assessment or even write it down that you took a right and left blood pressure, they were both the same to rule out this and the abdomen, there was no pulsatile mass in the abdomen. And you're inferring that you have ruled out this on the way into the hospital. So this is even pre-hospital stuff. So it's important, even though they're complaining of uh, chest pain or hypertension, go ahead and feel for that abdominal mass just to see if you can um, help with the diagnosis of abdominal aortic aneurysm. And if you have time, take a blood pressure and right and left.
Okay, so the reason why it's important for us pre-hospital and in the emergency room, in the initial phase of the emergency room resuscitation, is when I know, when you come in and you say I have an abdominal um, pulsatile mass in the abdomen, or I have a significant difference in right and left blood pressures, then, then I'll be prepared to do a couple of things. For the aortic dissection, I'm going to decrease the blood pressure. So decrease the hypertension. hypertension. And um, the reason for that is it buys me time to take this patient to the OR or maybe into the IR um, interventional radiology and we'll rip this, uh, we'll rip this uh, aortic out, aortic dissection out. Literally just take it out. Um, so we'll, we'll give that. We'll still put two large bore IVs just in case we need to, um, just in case we need to have uh, IV access and medication access and in case we go too far down on the hypertension. So depending on you, what your protocols are, you may need to call for your base hospital physician and tell them that you suspect an aortic dissection because um, you might have nitroglycerin in the medic. Again, remember, um, remember, you gotta follow your protocols, okay? It's 2016, things are changing. The way we see, what, the way we see, I uh, view emergency and pre-hospital medicine is changing. But to decrease the hypertension, you might use nitroglycerin. In this case, um, bringing the blood pressure down is significant, but you absolutely want two large bore IVs. So this takes precedence. You want two large bore IVs because this might be an intact or even just a little bit leaking aneurysm. So you might have a little bit of flow blood around the abdomen, free abdomen, but this aneurysm with your hypertension can blow and you'll only have a few seconds to bring this guy back to life. So if this aneurysm blows, especially if it's a big one, um, and he's got hypertension, then you only have a few seconds to get, get to the hospital and those two large bore IVs might be the answer to your problems, to his problems. All right, so anyway, uh, I'm Jay Gosuiko. This is EMT Paramedic on Facebook. Come find me and let's get better and faster and doing what we need to do. Shaka.